Hi everyone, good to see you. Today we're going to be talking about On Running Shoes. And On Shoes is a brand that probably many of you have seen. They have these little pillows that you run on, these little pods, these what they call clouds. And they're on the bottom of their shoes. And basically the way they're designed is that these little clouds take the force and impact for when you run. And I'm going to dive all into what on running shoes are, and we're going to review them together, talk about the technology, talk about the bottom line for runners, recreational athletes, and people that are in sports in general. But I kind of want to back up for a second to why are we talking about this? Well, on running shoes is something that a lot of people ask about. I was on a webinar the other day, I got asked about on running shoes. Certainly there's runners that will ask you, there's recreational athletes that will ask you. Not only are these shoes innovative in terms of some of the technology that they utilize, but also they are stylish, they look nice. And they're shoes that people are saying, well, can I kind of double them as running shoes and casual wear shoes? And can I use this for multi-purposes? So there's a lot of questions to ask. So let's dive into this important topic about what on running shoes are, and then let's also talk about some of the bottom lines. What do we know, what don't we know, and what should we advise to patients and runners? So on running shoes was created in 2010, and two Swiss entrepreneurs teamed up with a triathlon athlete who was looking for an innovative design because he was frustrated with the shoe design. And what went from utilizing things like garden hoses for the outer layer and the outer sole of the shoe quickly developed into a full-fledged international shoe company. In 2010, they won the ISPO brand new award for entrepreneurs and startups in sports. Other uh, awardees have been people like GoPro and a whole list of others. So obviously, this is a very nice company to keep for a business or for an organization. And certainly, these shoes have had a very quick rise. We've seen them start to be a loyal fan base among runners, among athletes, among people in general. So it's certainly a question we're going to get asked, and it's certainly something that we should have a prepared answer for, or some at least ideas about how to answer. Because it's our due diligence to really talk about how these on running shoes affect the musculoskeletal system, runner's health, patient's health. What should we do with these shoes? Is this something we recommend or do we not like them or are we not sure yet? To be determined. So let's talk about some of it today. And what we're going to start with is talking about the technology in particularly. So I want to show you these shoes. Now, if you're listening uh, audio, via audio or if you don't have a picture in front of you um, I'm going to show you the shoes right now and I will also describe them at the same time you can always google on running shoes O-N running shoes you will find them um, you can also you know click on images or you can find it at solutionseducation.com it's on the website and we've got pictures of them on there as well so let me show you some of the shoes and let me show you what exactly we want to look for the the technology we're talking about so here's the on running shoes and I'm looking at we're looking at a side view right now and I want to point out one piece of technology here that um, they, they discuss quite a lot and that is the cloud tech. The cloud tech is basically these little pillows, these little clouds under the sole. And as you can see, these are individual kind of pillows, clouds. And so the design here and let's give you one more view as well. So that's another side view. Here's a back view as well. So you can see each of these clouds are individual pillows or clouds that operate independently from the rest of the sole. So this isn't your traditional big uh, sole or one sole altogether. These are individual clouds um, that are broken up into smaller independent uh, uh, um, shock absorption are basically an independent parts of the soul. So basically what we're talking about here is that the on running shoe company talks about how these collapse individually. So the idea is that if you are, for example, a heel striker, you land on the heel part of the clouds. And then as you land on the heel, it compresses. It also then transfers weight. And you, as you compress, then you go to the next cloud and the next cloud, the next cloud. They, they operate independently. 
And not only do these clouds respond to vertical forces, but they're also horizontal forces too. So they can be compressed this way, they can be compressed um, you know, this way and this way. So different ways they can be compressed and basically absorb shock. Now, what On says is that they help to improve comfort. And additionally, what they say is that they help to take the shock absorption. And I want to talk about momentarily what that means for us as running experts and what that means for us, and particularly when it comes to the health of runners. But I want to talk about two other aspects of the shoe technology as well. Actually, three. And this third one actually is one that I'm seeing is uh, shown on their website. So I do want to show this. Basically, they talk about the laces and these laces basically are laces that can be um, cinched tight and then released very easily. You can see they're not really a place where you tie them, they call them the speed lace. And this isn't really what they call as part of their technology, but it is part of their shoe, so I want to bring it up. I didn't put this in the written form of the show notes, but basically this is where you can cinch the shoe tight and then release it either when you're running or during activity, and um, obviously it's, it's made for comfort. You can also see some loops down here potentially for the shoe shoes or laces to go through as well. The other piece of technology I want to talk about is specifically the speed board. So I want to talk about that and this is pictured right here. Um, again, if you're not seeing a visual, um, please reference these shoes. They're, it's helpful to see what exactly they show. But basically the speed board is this little thermoplastic layer right here between the upper sole and midsole. And it's kind of sandwiched between all of the clouds. And the idea that um, this speed board presents is, and again, I want to objectively state it from, from on because I want to wait to talk about some of the implications these shoes may or may not make. Um, what on says is that they take the force of impact. And basically, they act like a bow. So what they do is they land, they get tension through this kind of plastic layer. And as they receive that tension, then let's say you heel strike, you roll to your toe, they basically is going to keep that spring, that tension, that potential energy. And when you push off to make another step or to make, make another stride, it's going to release and give you a more springy step or springy um, uh, leap off of toe off to be able to then meet your next stride or land in heel strike. So basically the whole idea and whole design here would be that you are trying to save some of your energy by springing off and getting a more springy step. And then lastly, the last piece of tech that they really talk about on their website is the mission grip. And the mission grip is the proprietary rubber that they use on the bottom of the shoe. And they say that this rubber is designed to be able to keep traction, hold the ground, and keep a really firm, stable um, uh, traction with while you're running. So I want to transfer from looking at the shoe themselves and talk about why these shoes are specifically popular amongst runners. And you might be asking yourself, well, the shoe seems cool, it seems interesting, but what makes it any different than any other shoe? And here's why a lot of runners are talking about it. In, in, in particular, sometimes shoes and what trends in shoes are derived from is because of what people feel. And so I will share what some runners report back and what they talk about, um, and specifically what they're talking about with these shoes. So a lot of your low mileage runners will tell you that these shoes are lightweight. That's a big deal for a lot of people. They like running in lightweight shoes because it's easy to run. It makes it feel like a little bit of a lighter, more free experience while you're running. And certainly it can be a very desirable thing to have, lightweight running shoes. That's pretty much across the board. A lot of people like lightweight running shoes. Runners will also, and low mileage runners, will also talk about that they feel cushiony. They feel nice and comfortable. They're comfortable to wear. And also that they're springy, that when they run, they land, and they can kind of spring off to the next step. So a lot of the things that their tech is designed to do. And then lastly, that they're stylish. I talked about this a little bit in the past, and certainly it's an important part to think about. Some shoes are stylish, others aren't. These are fairly stylish shoes. And while I'm not the best person to ask in terms of whether style is <laughs> the trend or not, because I'm not a good barometer of that, uh, certainly you know people will say these feel and look like stylish shoes. So those are some of the things your low mileage runners will, sh will share with you. 
Now, additionally, other runners will weigh in, and some of those longer distance runners will also comment on the on running shoes. And a lot of those more endurance, high mileage runners, we're talking maybe half marathon distance and up, that's not a firm number, but kind of a ballpark, your half marathon distance and upwards into the ultra marathon distances. They'll talk about that uh, on running shoes are nice to run in. However, sometimes they lack some of the stability and support that they would like from other shoes or other shoes that they run in and that they feel like that support doesn't help them, especially on some of their longer runs as they get into higher distances, maybe over that half marathon distance. And They've also reported that some of the construction sometimes breaks down a little bit quicker than some of the other shoes that they'll wear. So those are some of the reports they get from low mileage and higher mileage runners. Additionally, uh, people that just work out or do weightlifting or recreational activities or walking around also just comment for the record that they like these shoes from the standpoint that they are comfortable to wear, that they are nice and um, smooth and cushiony and just kind of nice shoes to have on their feet. Some people with wider feet will mention that these shoes are a little narrow. So for people that have a wider foot, they sometimes say they don't fit me or they don't quite fit my foot shape. But all in all, that's kind of your spectrum. You get the low mileage runners that say, hey, we do like these. We like the tech. We feel like they're comfortable to run in. Some of the longer distance runners obviously are talking about the fact that they maybe lack some of the stability. And then working out people that are, are more casual walking around, maybe your healthcare providers like PTs or nurses or physicians sometimes will report that they like walking and moving in these because they're just comfortable to use. So that's some of the feedback that we get on, on running shoes. However, let's talk about what the bottom line is for these shoes. What do we recommend? What do we think of them? What do we know? What don't we know? And there's a couple of important things to note here. So I'm going to talk about the tech individually and how that tech may relate to specifically runners, different running types, and then talk about kind of some bottom line for us. So Obviously, while we'll hear a lot of different things from different runners, and obviously these are the things I've heard and researched from runners, low mileage, higher mileage, obviously there's a bunch of different opinions out there. And so certainly let's first talk about the cloud tech. So the cloud tech, or as we talked about before, those little clouds, those little pillows at the bottom of the running shoe, um, these are certainly a part of the shoe that are important to note. And this is kind of their flagship design. So there's a couple correlations we can make here. And one thing in particular is that the On Running Shoe website talks about how this makes for a more cushiony, more um, uh, absorptive run, it, it cushions impact. Well, as we know, because we previously talked about high cushion running shoes increasing impact. In fact, that was a uh, article, a YouTube video we did and a podcast we did as well. Um, and we talked about how those high cushion shoes actually create more impact through the body and increase ground reaction forces. So we increase the stress perceived through the lower extremities. So those high cushion shoes aren't what we actually lean towards these days. However, when we look at On's brand of running shoes and we look at the cloud tech, we actually don't see that they are this really big absorptive shoe. We actually see that they're fairly moderately absorptive. They're not overly cushiony and they're not, they don't have a huge stack height. They have kind of a moderate stack height. So moderate amount of sole on the bottom of the, the shoe, the, just the depth of it. And then also when we look at the way it runs or compresses, it's not a overly cushiony shoe. So the concerns of the fact that we are running in a very cushiony, overly cushiony shoe that you can just run harder in and damage yourself, maybe not there. However, it is good to note that the cushions, the cloud technology or the little cloud tech that's at the bottom of the shoe does make movement in terms of it cushions both forward or anterior to posterior translations and lateral translations as well. So it's taking not only vertical forces, but kind of horizontal forces as well. And so as it compresses, it's important to look at the fact that that compression, that shock absorption, it does create some increased amount of stress to the lower extremities because it's a little more cushion than maybe your traditional sole of your, your shoe. That would be a great research project for someone to investigate. How does this shoe translate to a, another shoe of moderate absorption? Do we see some differences? That's an area that we'd love to see some more research on. However, 
we can certainly see that for these shoes, since they take a lot of impact through the sole of the shoe, and it can be vertical, it can be horizontal, that creates some layer of instability. And that instability, while it might cushion nicely, that instability can provide potentially an unstable surface, especially for those higher mileage runners. And while it gets compressed in multiple directions, that lack of rigidity and stability can certainly potentially cause some risk for injury. So that's one of the things we talk about when we think of the cloud tech. Let's also talk about the speed board because we mentioned that as well. The speed board or that thermoplastic uh, material sandwiched between the upper and midsole of the shoe, it acts like that bow accepting tension during initial contact and then releasing it upon toe off to propel the runner forward. And while in theory, this would be a nice effect to be able to create a more springy run, a more, uh, uh, you know, give propels you forward quicker. Remember that energy is not created nor destroyed, right? So when you land, maybe in heel strike, for example, you land and then you are essentially getting some braking forces from that shoe going up through your body because you're landing on the ground and that speed board is winding up tension. So it's essentially slowing you down because it is some more firm material that you're kind of blowing through. However, when you then tow off, it springs you forward. So that would be the idea there. However, if we are increasing the impact through the lower extremities by winding up that speed board, essentially we might be getting a increase of stress through the lower extremities and therefore potentially causing more stress on us in our body and potentially causing more um, impact in our bodies because we're trying to wind up that speed board to ultimately get you to propel forward. So it might be kind of taking it away on the initial contact and then adding it to the toe off. Is that something that is truly beneficial? We get concerned with certainly when it comes to how much impact is sustained through the lower extremities. We know that can relate to musculoskeletal injuries, but certainly something that um, is innovative and potentially could help, but we are worried that it might be causing increased stress through the body. Additionally, with the speed board, we see that it's going to help, especially that heel striker, land on the heel, propel to the toe. I'm not saying it helps, I'm saying that that's the technology it was designed for, but what about that midfoot or forefoot runner, right? So if you land midfoot, are you now kind of blowing through that speed board and are you just kind of landing on the cloud tech? And then if it's not winding up, is that speed tech or is that speed board doing really anything for you? And then lastly, the mission grip. The mission grip, we don't really see anything about the sole to shoe that's out there that says this is either better or worse for you in terms of a runner. We would say that certainly good rubber on the ground to get traction is helpful. We don't want it to be too sticky because obviously we worry about you know a meniscus tear or ACL or something like that getting your foot trapped. But certainly we do see that the, the rubber they're using seems to work for runners. We don't hear bad feedback, but we don't really have any data that would say it has a benefit or it has a downside or um, really that it, it, it's, it's essentially neutral is what we see in terms of the mission grip. So what's kind of our bottom line? Well, we certainly would say that these shoes, while they have gotten a cult following, they have had a lot of enthusiasts using them and certainly got a lot of exposure. There's some really cool technology that's been integrated into these shoes and they have some potential upsides of being lightweight. Um, they provide a pretty perceivably cushiony run to them and maybe that cushiony run is not at the cost of just having a lot of cushion on the bottom of your shoe, but actually it's just a perceived cushion that is still a moderately firm shoe. Again, that's where a little bit of research could really benefit us. How much cushion do those cloud technologies integrate? And is that truly increasing absorption and increasing stress through the body? Or is it something that just makes the ride or the, the run more comfortable? However, the perceivably downside or the downside to these shoes is that they don't really provide some of the stability we might hope. With all those independent clouds, we do see a lot of um, medial lateral or um, um, you know, instability, especially at the lower extremities, which could be a concern. And again, 
Do we see that that is something that needs more research? Yes. At the end of the day, all of these things need more research. These shoes are quite new. These are the emerging trends that we see. This is the emerging data that's coming out of them, but it's initial thoughts. This is something that should be updated as more research comes out and more people examine these shoes because certainly we are starting to understand how these shoes fit with runners, but we are making and drawing some correlations and we certainly don't have the full data set in front of us. Um, if you'd like to read more about this, there's a bunch of references at the bottom of our uh, online blog post you're more than welcome to take a look at. Um, so right now we advise it for those shorter distance runners, maybe those weightlifters, maybe those um, people that are gonna be walking around, but we'd hesitate to give our distance runners or uh, marathon distance, maybe even approaching the half marathon distance, these shoes because they might have some instability to them. Now, obviously, shoes is an important part of running gait analysis. And if you want to learn more about running gait analysis or become more confident in your gait analysis, certainly check out our course, The Essentials of Running Gait Analysis. And it has not only a detailed information about shoes and what shoes to prescribe, but also some really helpful ways to be able to get your own running gait analysis clinic started and to help you become a running expert. In the meantime, reach out to us if you have any questions or any thoughts, and we look forward to uh, talking with you and seeing you soon. In the meantime, take care.